and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, coming to us straight from The Printing Goes Ever On, it's probably the longest... <laughs> Or the longest company name I've dealt with here, and creator of the upcom of the upcoming Neja Nejavina. Sorry if I mispronounced that. That um, a mix of Five E and Slavic mythology. The man best known as Max. How are you doing today, man? Hi, man. Thank you for having me here. And it's pronounced Nejavina. <laughs> Nejavina. Um, yeah, I. I knew in I knew in advance when I was when when I was going to be dealing with um when I was going to be when I was going to be dealing with po with Polish I knew that I was going to have some <laughs> pronunci pronunciation in interesting moments. <laughs> yeah, that's why yeah, we we were <clears throat> kind of expecting that so there's a whole language guide in the book as well and uh, like names will also have like if you scroll on the campaign you can find that um, names have those uh, <clears throat> pronunciation mm -hmm. uh, as you would pronounce in english um guides like in in uh, parentheses yeah so it's kind of easy <laughs> because yeah I, I know it can be can be sometimes tricky to, to yeah. figure out how, how you should say this yeah, bridging the gap between languages is tricky and is tricky at the best of times and Polish is espe is especially tricky for a lot of English speakers. That makes me proud. Oh. Well, I, I've jo I've jokingly referred I've jokingly referred to the Polish language at times for for English speakers as the as um the hard mode of European languages. <laughs> well, it's I think it's still below Chinese in terms of uh, complexity, but yeah, well, not that easy. Languages, even for us, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, languages that use glyphics are always going to be more complex than th than those that use the st the um, standard alphanumeric. But um, with, but with that said, I'd like to delve into the humble beginnings, in a sense, as I often do around here. Walk me through okay. your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. Hmm. I think my first introduction was when I got my D&D 3.0 starter set. Mm -hmm. When I was like 10, I think. And uh, yeah, playing through those uh, sample uh, random adventures that were built in with just a uh, dungeon crawl. Um, then things uh, expanded a little when I figured out that we can actually make stuff by ourselves and I don't have to follow the, the, like the basic building blocks that we have there and there's actually more. Maybe it's uh, well at the, the, that time uh, in Poland actually D and D wasn't that popular. Uh, we were mainly influenced by uh, Warhammer and uh, the, that whole uh, genre, so to say, uh, with uh, a very specific uh, translation actually that uh, made Warhammer um, a little less. Funny and much more grimdark, so to say. Uh, so it's not um, Monty Python's uh, Holy Grail, but you know, nitty, just gritty, gritty stuff. And uh, that was the main, uh, yeah, main main idea about RPGs in Poland. But it uh, luckily started to change with time. And uh, for example, later on, I discovered I think my favorite favorite system, which is uh, Numenera. I don't know if you've heard about it. I have. I've co I've covered Numenera extensively on this channel. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I I really really enjoy <clears throat> the the system and the the setting. Mm -hmm. So so that was that, and uh, well, uh, along the way, also things like uh, wargaming happened. So mm -hmm. you know the whole whole deal. 
And when um, touching on the war gaming part, were there in, were there any war games over, over those years that were mainstays? Uh, not really, because I never could uh, kind of afford those uh, all those minis, the plastic crack, so to say. So uh, I played with some just cardboard, cardboard uh, bases, um, and uh, yeah, it just I enjoyed. I think I enjoyed more the the painting and the general uh, general idea about it, and uh, not not really in the in the long run, nothing nothing stayed that much. Mm -hmm. So. Well, that's. Uh, <clears throat> I was lucky or unlucky that the 3D printing wasn't a thing when uh, when I was getting into all this. That uh, yeah, I couldn't <laughs> make my own minis. So. And ju just remember, folks, thin your paints. Exactly, two thin layers. Mm -hmm. And now, when it came to now. When it came to when it came to your experiences with um, with ta with tabletop, you admit you mentioned Numen you mentioned Numenera, you had mentioned um, D and D three point um, Were those largely the mainstays, or did you or did you dip around between uh, and look into other systems over the years? Well, looking at systems, yeah, of course, like uh, the Star Wars system from Fantasy Flight Games. Uh... Uh, some other randoms like uh, Shadowrun, uh, or some very niche ones like the system made for Firefly, for example. Um, that'd be that'd be Cortex. Yeah. <clears throat> so, well, looking at system is is fun in itself, I think, and just uh, seeing what people come up with to make make uh, just uh, gamify the experience. So yeah, I I do enjoy reading those those books. Now, with that with that in mind, when it came, um, obviously there's no, there's no shortage of worlds or campaign settings that are D and D adjacent. Um, were there any campaign settings that were st that were standouts to you that um, get that got more use than others? No, I actually never used any settings like like that. I was always just I don't like the being limited in some ways mm -hmm. because uh, it gives me much more freedom to just come up with stuff uh, like improvise stuff when I don't have time to prepare sessions for example uh, well yeah of course with, uh, with Numenera it's different because uh, if you build a world around all the uh, great ideas that they have in the, in the book it's kind of different um, but still uh, I like to have it uh, without those uh, mm. imposed borders so to say yeah. Now, with now with that in mind, how did ne how did Nehavina come to come to be? Was it Nehavina? <laughs> I'll get it right eventually. <laughs> how how it came to be? Mm. Well, actually, it was. Uh... It's a project that I managed to get some additional funding from our government, our Polish government, uh, for a prototype of the project itself. So uh, this was also uh, like a way to make a little more a project a little more aligned with uh, what would be uh, possible to get funding for. Mm. Yeah, but also it's something that uh, yeah we really wanted to get into. Um, and just show some of the stuff that's uh, not really well known because yeah of course there's uh, everyone played the witcher uh, especially the third part but uh, the witcher is actually mm, well the slavic stuff in witcher is mm, well at least in the books it's uh, it's an addition and uh, the main main ideas are more Arthurian and uh, Celtic, for example. Uh, well, in the in the games, it's kind of different because uh, they had much more space to to explore all those uh, themes and ideas. But uh, yeah, still, uh, it's not something uh, that well known, and uh, it's it holds really, really, really cool stuff. That's uh, well, not uh, really within what. Uh, <laughs> 
people are used to with the D&D and uh, yeah, the, the most common settings like, uh, I don't know, Forgotten Realms, Eberron. Mm-hmm. Now, with that, with that in mind, what I'd like to go over some of the some of the bullet points that were me- that were mentioned within it on the Kickstarter, and one of them is the idea of Slavic themed D and D mechanics. Are there mm-hmm. is there any um, before we even get into things like ri- like races or subclasses? Are there any? Um, are there any significant changes to the to the core rules or some or anything added to the core ju- just to refl- just to reflect that? Uh, I think uh, like at this this point in time uh, we aren't really changing stuff to make it uh, just to make it easier to to play without uh, like some possibly game breaking rules. But uh, uh, one rule that we'd like to expand upon like a mechanic uh, that's additional it would be um, the, the pacts with the, the diavols so so um, the devils um, that uh, <clears throat> yeah it's kind of geese or geese or how, how it's, it's pronounced uh, but with uh, a lot more extra steps and uh, much more uh, possible vindication so to say Now, next would of, would of course be the subclasses, and you did put in a short list of, of the subclasses, and I'd like to I'd like to delve I'd like to delve into each. And apologies in advance because I didn't see a pronunciation guide for for these, <laughs> and I know I'm going to screw I know I'm going to screw these up. So, actually, in lieu of that, I will just I will just go with the class that each of, is associated with, um, <laughs> just for just for the sake of just for the sake of my sanity. Um, so I'll start with the one you're adding for the fighter. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a Voy, and this class will be... Uh, it's influenced by, um, like, um, to just uh, quickly sum it up. Um, before regular armies, um, there were, like, those uh, mostly uh, more wealthy people, uh, men who had the loyal uh, team of uh, fighters mm-hmm. and uh, those those would be just uh, those be, would be called a drużyna and uh, it would be formed out of like uh, <clears throat> boys so so yeah it would be a class that's focused on on teamwork and uh, protection and mainly so so that's that uh, as for the druid, so this would be the the subclass. This it's uh, the Volk. You can actually read about uh, him in the quick start. The, the whole subclass is uh, available for free in the in the quick start. And this one is uh, is focused on uh, well co- connection with the the uh, dead uh, by like not really is uh, in as necromancy, but more as uh, just communication with them. Uh, well, the few next ones, so the Wiedźmak, uh, the Leśniczy, those are uh, still to be a little more refined, so I, I probably won't say much. Um, the the Sorcerer, so the Mamun or Mamuna for females, uh, is uh, focused on the uh, mixed breeds uh, between the the demons and the uh, people, so they'd uh, be uh, on a range, on a scale, so to say, uh, that uh, they are from uh, like very um, aligned with uh, the civilization uh, up to a scale of really just uh, being wild creatures. Mm-hmm. And for for uh, the warlock, uh, it's uh, well. It's it's uh, kind of what you'd expect for, for a Baba Yaga. Um, cleric, uh, so Zerca or Zerts would be um, this is a little more a class that's uh, kind of more politically connected than the Volk. If the Volk is more like a wandering 
um, entertainer possibly, uh, then the Zerz would be a uh, more uh, the person that would be more on the courts, uh, and uh, yeah, with a different set uh, of uh, uh, his expertise, his or her expertise. And the last one is the rogue, so the Jovis. That's uh, that's actually. <laughs> Uh, a class that is uh, well this is really niche and specific to the setting because we decided to make a special place where the undead are gathered collected so so to say because well a lot of the undead in the, a lot of the demons in slavic uh, mythology are basically dead or undead mm-hmm. and uh, you need to um, well, even if they aren't really visible as undead, uh, you still need to make sure that the, the grandpa you put in, in, in grave last week still stays there, because stuff can happen if you don't do stuff correctly, uh, all the rituals, so to say. And uh, yeah, um, we made a whole uh, region that's uh, governed as to make uh, the, give a place to live for those undead, to make the civilized, civilized world a little more uh, comfortable for for people and uh, yeah, this the rogues would uh, is in the form of, of this subclass would be more focused on yeah just uh, finding those undead and uh, bringing them there. It, they would be like agents of this this region, uh, and it's also a, a little uh, wink to our uh, Polish uh, uh, backers who might uh, recognize. Uh, this uh, the the name itself uh, as a reference to an o- really old Polish cartoon, also. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that that's really niche. <laughs> yeah. Now, speaking of pronunciation, I'd like to touch on the creation of the artificial language that you um, develop that you developed for this um, inter-Slavic, as you referred to it. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be fair that we developed it. We are uh, we are just uh, referencing and using it uh, where it's possible and to 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 where it's possible. It's an, just an open project to uh, well, which works with uh, many Slavic languages and uh, yeah, uses like roots of words and uh, the <clears throat> makes it work for other people to be able to read them. So uh, that's. Well, it's possible we are trying to use it or just um, start from it, piggyback on it, and uh, and develop it further uh, for the needs that we have. Mm -hmm. And with that in in mind, I did see the um, letter pronunciation pronunciation guide, but I am I'm curious if you guys plan on on putting any any short videos to aid to aid in that pronunciation or when it comes to creating wor- um, words and places that still fit within that language in the full book. Oh, that's a really, really good idea That uh, about those videos. I'll... <laughs> I'm going to write it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, in the in the book itself, yeah, there's a whole, a whole will be whole um, section about uh, the language and the uh, Possibly how to form form words uh, to in the more in the uh, GM part of the book, so yeah. not to bother players with, with that. Uh, of course, naming uh, suggested naming for the the new races, uh, yeah, of course. But uh, otherwise, it's more of the, the, the GM part, and yeah, uh, of course, uh, it's much easier if you know how to uh, form new words for for places, people, um, what rules to keep to make it all cohesive. I figured I would ask because obviously you can't account for every location in the setting and people are going mm-hmm. to want to come up with their own locations, whether it be villages, um, um, ca- um, ruins, what ruins, landmarks, what have you to fit, to fill in well, the gap and, <laughs> and personalize it themselves. You always have Google maps and you can just always find some obscure villages in the region and it will work perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Which obviously that's obviously that's an option as well, but um since you mentioned not wanting to not wanting to limit yourself when it came to campaign settings in your own in your own time, I'd imagine there's a similar there's mm-hmm. a similar deal with uh, with other GMs as well. 
Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, something's breaking on the connection. Uh, could you repeat that question? Oh. I had fit... I had figured that since you had mentioned not wanting to not wanting to limit yourself, while while take while taking notes from villages is cer is certainly one way to do it. Um, obviously, it's, obviously it wouldn't be apropos to have that be the only way. I'm sorry, I can hear like every third word you are saying. Move, moving, moving, pa moving past that. Um, as I now, as I understand, as I understand it, this is lar This is largely rooted in the um, in the style of Sla of Slavic tribalism in the ninth through twelfth century. I, th I believe you said it on the Kickstarter. Um. I'd like you to I'd like mm -hmm. you to help me paint a picture as far as as far as what the, how that tribalism entails and how that how that carries over into the into this setting. All right. Uh, so I think the the main part that would uh, help uh, players and GMs to, to create this atmosphere and uh, the the. Uh, just uh, spread the ideas uh, in the game uh, would be to reference the culture guide and the, the customs and uh, feasts. So that's uh, like something we will uh, spend a lot of time on and developing just uh, uh, <clears throat> refined versions of uh, general descriptions of the feast, feasts uh, and uh, like the whole life cycle uh, that you'd expect from birth till death. Um, uh, so yeah, that's that's a, a big thing that uh, we've worked on to just uh, extrapolate it from different regions and uh, make it uh, work uh, in in uh, in a game. Um, yeah, but also like stuff from the uh, from the stretch goals. So that would be, for example, like uh, the the house spirits, which are a impo important part of life and uh, help around uh, the house uh, or for example uh, cooking because you wouldn't expect some things um, or some things would be uh, easier to understand if you know uh, well how, how they the culture um, and the, the in the general region people uh, what they focused on when uh, yeah gathering food and just uh, storing it preparing meals it's like a big thing uh, for culture. Um, yeah, I think that's 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 that uh, mainly. Yeah. Now, a lot of times when I've talked when I've talked with people about campaign settings, one question that I'm I sorry, I I cannot hear you once again, please. I off I've talked with people about campaign settings in mm -hmm. the, in um the in the past and. Mm -hmm. One thing that I that is that I often bring up is is um rec is recommended or less recommended um race cl race class combinations. Obviously, obviously, with a lot really? of the races that that would be tricky. But when it comes to um classes, um are there any, are there any particular classes that might be a bit trickier that in your mind might be a bit trickier to integrate into into ne into Nehavina or is that or is that not really the case here Nehavina <laughs> Now you you're doing it on purpose um, um <laughs> <laughs> yeah you I know what um the main inhabitants uh, of the world are uh, humans and halflings. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but also possibly uh, with a little bit of uh, feeling as a way to uh, just uh, work with the uh, diabol uh, race. Uh, so the other more, mm, well, high fantasy classes, uh, races uh, would be... Uh, somewhat unexpected for the inhabitants of the world so even like a a half orc would be a little well 
as we were just uh, during tests of the of the the setting itself when we played um it was just uh, it often happened like uh, the npcs would just uh, react to the to the specific race uh, with the perspective they do have so they just apply the knowledge of their own world to the race so they just consider that it's just a weird looking and here instead uh, the name of the the demon monster mm -hmm. uh, especially if, the, if those are more integrated into society because uh, yeah that's like the one of the uh, main uh, things about the setting that we have the um, civilized part and the wild part and the and the relations between each other so uh, yeah even you you could have for example uh, yuan t uh, within the um, more uh, snakey look, and uh, they could be uh, considered a Vurauka, so that's uh, one of the playful races in the arena. And uh, I, I think they'd be really uh, easy to mistake uh, between one another, and uh, that would be how the NPCs uh, would react for, to the, this uh, non Neavina race. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Now in the in the same in the same vein, when it comes to classes, would think would things like would things like bards be, um, be a bit unusual to integrate, or would they, or would they fit in? And no, I, I wouldn't say so because um, yeah, we we also in in the in the region we did have um, like wandering uh, people. Uh, who who sang and told stories? So absolutely, that would uh, work really well. I mean, that I think that the only class that would possibly have a little bit of a problem integrating would be a monk, because like it's a really really specific uh, class with, with uh, yeah some uh, a set of uh, skills that are uh, well the, at least for me uh, and the, to, in my understanding it's uh, well, the the uh, way of uh, combat is uh, the the hand hand to hand combat is kind of uh, special and uh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, worst comes to worst, I think, is somebody insists on playing a monk. Um, you could pro you could probably you could probably write that in as just a as just a pugilist, i.e. a i.e. just a brawler for money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of what what I was also thinking because yeah, we still do have those two mystery uh, subclasses still to to unlock. So so yes, stuff can be hidden there like that. That one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, one thing that one thing that I did find kind of in, kind of interesting is that is that. You're planning on including adventure modules for multiple tiers, which mm -hmm. even get even settings that even settings I've seen that don't that that um that do have modules I should say. They don't often they don't often cover cover higher tiers because there's this narrative that um that D, that D and D gets boring after tenth level. <laughs> so I do <laughs> I do appreciate that you're that you're. That you're covering a variety of levels with with the modules. How how high is high level for you, in that regard? Well, I to check it check it because I think it was uh, like uh, roughly level fifteen. Just the quick uh, uh, quick estimation. I, I'm not really sure at this point right now because uh, yeah, it was in development for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, because it's uh, like the most complex adventure for the for the highest uh, tier, um, because yeah, it, it would be uh, it cannot be this uh, this easy, and it needs to be refined to to work for those characters so they aren't bored with uh, with everything. So the focus is changed from yeah, like smaller mundane things to much more world changing. Mm -hmm. Uh, ideas, so yeah, that's why uh, yeah, it, it it took some time. So I don't really remember at this point, but I think it was roughly around level fifteen. That's that's fairly fifteen as an ACL is fairly unusual. 
and I do appreciate its inclusion. Um, That's good to know that, now, uh, that it's, it's not, 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 it won't go to waste. Yeah. <laughs> now, one of the other things I was curious about is on the ships. Right, ships. Um, Vo I keep wanting to say Voivod, and I'm sure I'm sure that's not it. <laughs> uh, Voivod. All right. Oh, you mean you mean the Voivod ships? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So that's those are basically the regions of of the of uh, of Nayavina. All that's right. how it how it's divided, and yeah, in each one you have the the wild enclave and the the civilized part that. Um, that you yeah, have the uh, dynamics and relations and uh, are more or less integrated with one another, have better or worse relations. Uh, so that's like a really uh, easy to work on uh, theme and uh, idea for each region. It's uh, like a, uh, it makes it quite, uh, quite easy to start off a, a region when players are entering it and uh, can uh, form uh, relations with uh, one or the other, and uh, conflicts can be established quite easily because, uh, yeah, the uh, the regions aren't really aligned in terms of what they what they want, and mm -hmm. the obviously, obviously the the wild one is more of the uh, well considered backwards by the civilized part so like uh, the obvious uh, deforestation for example like it's an easy easy conflict um point mm -hmm. given that would it be fair that one of the major themes that would that could be explored is that relationship between civilization and the wild yeah 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 that's uh, that's exactly exactly that so uh that uh, even if players don't want to do that, uh, it's easy to just uh, use the uh, uh, use the fairly easy to build upon. while creating adventures. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. I sorry about that. There was a bit of um, technology being interesting for me for a moment. <laughs> um, now, given the given the nature of the wild, um, I'm curious. I'm curious if on the GM side of things, you guys have planned for encounter tables. You know, j just when it comes to what sort of beast one might one might. Um, encounter j just
Sorry about that. <laughs> don't know what don't know what was going on there. Hang on a minute. Yep. All right. So before 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 my t before technology decided to be interesting on me. Mm -hmm. Um I had asked regarding in, rega regarding whether or not you have in whether or not you were considering encounter tables in the GM section. I'm sorry, but uh, it's the connection is difficult. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you were consider if you had considered um enc encounter tables or wandering encounter rules in the GM section. So random encounters, you you're asking about that? Something to that extent, yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, probably like um maybe not as in just a like a generator or something like that, but uh, more as in uh inspirations for each uh each region. So um if you have uh, like um one place and uh, even if it's described in uh, in the player side of the of the book still um it it will still have some some mysteries and additional information for for the gm to incorporate in the adventures and possibly create an encounters from that so uh <clears throat> like yeah <clears throat> i think the the good uh, good example of uh, how that works is uh, yeah actually the the book for for Numenera because uh, there you have those uh, little blurbs about uh, points of interest for example and uh, those are really inspiring to just even just throw them in randomly when when you have your players walking around an area. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to magic, going obviously going into going into the full spell list would be a bit redundant, but I'd be curious if you could give me a few examples of what your of thematic spells that are that are getting added in the book in the book, just to get a feel for the kind of magic that is going to be present in this setting. I don't think I can do that at this point still because uh, it's a work in progress, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to say stuff that would be changed later on. So that's the. Uh... Kind of still <clears throat> not not uh, refined enough to be able to talk about this. Okay, I can I can understand that. To instead instead, I'd like to pivot into the kind of magic that want that would be present within this within this setting versus the way magic might be presented in a more traditional setting. Because I think there I think there might be a bit of a shift in that regard. Yeah, we are. We like to. Uh focused more on the ritual side of magic rather than the instant spells and uh, yeah of of course uh, a little more um, on the nature side of things uh, even if it's uh, non <laughs> non druid spells or like something like that but it's still um, yeah uh, but uh, the, yeah I think the, the main point here would be uh, focus on on rituals and uh, magic, which takes a longer time and uh, has a um, <clears throat> effect that can last uh, longer or in a different uh, affect something in a different way. So uh, that would be mainly that. Mm -hmm. Which cer certainly certainly makes sense, and that would f that would certainly fit fit in with the motif. Um, mm -hmm. I am curious, just. Just that, just as a quick, just as a quick aside, about whether or not in playtesting, anybody has tr has tried to ru has tried to run it in a um, hex crawl like style. Hello, I'm sorry. Once again, please. Um, I was saying I, I'm curious if anyone's tried to run it in a more hex crawl like style. Uh, yeah, not really. I mean, having. Part of the adventure, of course, mm -hmm. but but uh, I think the main focus would be people and interactions between people and the 
uh, the colorful NPCs and uh, monsters, not in a, in a more narrative way than a uh, <clears throat> just a crawler. So yeah, of course, if you want combat, you can still do that. And uh, if you want to do just some exploration, like ruins or a dungeon, absolutely. But uh, I think the the main weight is is somewhere else. And if you are looking to expand on on the crawling side uh, of D and D, this is not really the setting, I think. Yeah. And for what it, for what it's worth, hex crawls not while they can while they can lean into combat, they're more focused on exploration, since it is literally a sandbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just uh, exploration. Sure, it's just uh, it would probably be need, need to be adjusted to like exploration of a really deep forest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like dungeon crawl, it's uh... To this aspect. Mm -hmm. Now, given the given the array of and and the like that are going to be tied to the setting within the book, um, A question that has often come up in debates is how we make is how we keep monsters being um, monstrous, especially with, especially with the glut of um, genre savviness that pl that players at a table are going to have. Um, yeah. How do you mm -hmm. how do you tackle that ki that kind of thing? Uh, well, the first focus when when making the monsters is. Uh trying to uh, show the, the the actual um, <clears throat> folk tales behind them. So if it's... Uh, uh, they were really specific. Like, I think my... my, uh, my uh, favorite one would be the uh, Vargin, which is... Uh, well, can look like a uh, a friendly cat, but uh, its pairing can fill the owner's head with hornets. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's an abundance of those weird, quirky, but also sometimes really dangerous uh, ideas uh, that uh, come with the monsters. So, even if they uh, aren't looking more deadly and uh, scary, uh, they still can mess up in in different ways. So, even if it's not uh, not direct aggression, it can be uh, cause, like bringing plague to a land, for example, or um, well, like uh, if, yeah, some of those aren't even made to be uh, like opposing uh, characters. Some are, some are also. Benign and can be helpful, can assist the the characters, the play characters. So, so yeah, that's that. I think. Mm -hmm. Now, with that in mind, what are you shooting for as far as a total page count with this? I know that I know that this is the this is the kind of thing that can be shifted due to um, stretch goals. But what would mm -hmm. be a range that you that you guys would be shooting for? Yeah, so at this point, I think we've got roughly 250 pages. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, of course, the, the stretch goals uh, will expand on that. Uh, so I think that, uh, yeah, we can we can say that the, the rough range will be between 250 and 300 pages. Which includes the, the adventure modules. Yeah. yeah. And with the... With that in mind, what are you shooting for as far as a release window? Not a date per se, but mm -hmm. a 
Ge but a gen but a general range. Yeah, the general range uh, uh, would be. Uh, we'd like to start shipping April next year. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, the, 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 there's a difference between the just the digital pledge, for example. So, mm -hmm. people who are only interested in the PDF and, uh, for example, the uh, printable miniatures, which are uh, ready for print at, right now. So they will be. Uh, they will be sent out to backers as soon as possible. So in in June, most likely. All right. And I will certainly be keeping a close eye on on it on its release, and hopefully by that, hopefully by then, I'll actually get, I'll actually start getting names right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and braving the hell of time zones as well as technology hating us to <laughs> come all the way up to the temple. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun. I, I really enjoyed it. So I really you know, had some uh, really uh, important questions. And uh, <laughs> thank you for inspiring me for to make those, those short videos about the language because... Yeah. Yeah, I think that's something uh, really necessary. Mm -hmm. Having uh, like to listen to you pronounce Neyavina so many times in so many different wrong yeah. ways. Yeah. But anytime you see fit to return to the temple, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Thanks a lot. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!